it heavy now. All right. Okay. So let's get straight into it. In time, you're gonna get straight into it. And once again, I am happy to know you. You might know this person, but I'm, I'm just gonna start with the thing. The number one thing I want to know: Where are you in the world right now? And what is the temperature? Because you look like you're cold. I am cold. <laughs> I'm in Missouri, um, Kirksville, Missouri. It's like a small town in. Like a really small town. <laughs> What's the temperature? Oh, I have not checked the temperature today. I think it's like in the, it has to be on in the 40s or 30s right now. It's not that cold because we were in like the negatives, I think two or three weeks ago. So I don't really have to wear a sweater right now. So I can tell you like it's, it has to be in the 40s or you, I think you've been there too long. For you are Bahamian, and you're saying it's in the 40s, and it's fine. You need to come yes. home. I was saying the same thing. <laughs> I'm getting used to the weather. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get right to it again. Um, this is Athletic Matters with your host, mm -hmm. Athletic Department Training Department. You can't tell people. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Oh, who is that? Katitra. No, Chef I don't know. I don't know. Grandfield, representing the athletic trade. I am going to cut that out. I'm going to cut that out. I am. I am. You can go. Chiquita Penfield. Okay, thank you. You're right. Look at my diploma right here. Thank you. Don't carry on. I see him. I see him. Don't do that. Okay, Paulette. Yeah, we'll, we'll get started. So I know you're in okay. Missouri in the cold. Um, obviously, tell us about your program. I'm sure it's exciting that you finally got into the athletic training program. Kind of explain what's been going on as far as the process it took to get in, um, the journey getting there, and power classes and everything going now. Well, I'd start by saying the process was really long. You know, because um, from UB time, trying to get into the school, um, trying to complete the, pre the prerequisites to get in the school, it was like tedious and challenging as well. But yeah, the process was actually long. It took me a year to complete the prerequisites to get into the school. And afterwards, being into the program and knowing like COVID happened and all that, stuff happened in the world so it actually played a role in making it harder for me to come actually be here in Missouri but nonetheless the um, athletic director of the school she was able to make sure all the classes were on zoom for everybody because you know all the classes went on zoom so I was on zoom for the first semester half of the first semester and then I transferred actually to Missouri. But it was a long, tedious process to begin with. And the program right now, it's still challenging. I can't say it's easy. I'd be lying if I said that the program was easy. It is a very challenging and time-consuming program. You have to love it to actually be in this program. I could only love this to be in it. So it's really tedious. Okay, so how much of your experience being an intern with us like prepared you for what to expect. Nobody expected COVID, so I know we didn't prepare you for that. But I still hear you. <laughs> well, you guys prepared me really well because I was always wondering, like, I can't wait to actually do this stuff. But I did a lot of it um, with you and Sasha. Um, the little tests and the quizzes y'all would give me <laughs> with the bones, all those stuff. Um, like when treating one of the athletes having y'all, y'all were like my preceptors actually, before I actually came into the athletic training program. So doing that with you all, it actually prepared me to like be in the clinics here. Um, one of my preceptors here at Truman, she stated that I went in smoothly, even though I was one of the last students to actually come into the clinic. She said I transitioned really smoothly and I, Thank you all for helping me to do that. If I had not um, interned at the school, I wouldn't know what to do. Like when coming into the clinic, 
in the middle of the semester, all the students already knew what to do and stuff like that. And it was just me one transitioning. So that actually helped me a lot. I, I have, I have a, a little question. I still hear you. Excuse me. My turn. Um, so a little, a little jumping question. So did, did working under Miss Hanfield, because I'm going to mess up again, and Sasha, right? <laughs> did it, I put respect on them. Putting respect on them. Did they kind of make it look easy? That's what I'm curious about. Um, Like some stuff they did make it look Okay, it happens. Let's see. Frozen. Oh, that's good. We got a little frozen. Yeah, um, let's see. We just have a froze a freeze on her side, but I we're still clear on this side. Oh, that's okay. not are we good? Are you, can you hear us? Are we good? Did you, did you, did you switch it your home? Were you on like Wi-Fi? No. I just saw it loading for some reason. All right. All right. Let's continue then. Continue. Okay. So I don't know what part you heard. Because <laughs> I just <laughs> started. Yeah, we didn't hear anything. We didn't start over for our splits. We'll edit. Oh. And all this, we'll edit. <laughs> I did say like it, it, they did make it look easy. But, like, when I transitioned and coming out, it wasn't really easy, per se. I mean, what they did, they're used to doing it, and they're way experienced. So whatever they do in the training room, it would look easy because they're very experienced. It's very nice. So talk about mm -hmm. your classes. Now, is there any class that you feel you have um, a lot of interest in or that's given you the most challenge right now. What would you say is um, your hardest class? What would you say is the class you enjoy the most? Um, okay, my hardest class here was there's a lot of them. <laughs> well, my, my <laughs> hardest one would be <laughs> exercise science, <laughs> exercise physiology. That one? <laughs> that one? And the thing about it is you and Sasha warned me about that class. <laughs> So actually, when I went into it, I was okay prepared to know that this is going to be one of the hardest class. And it was like, oh my goodness, even the book itself is confusing. But I got through it. <laughs> and that was like last semester. I got through that class and I was able to pass it. <laughs> so um, the most, like the class that I feel that I'm leaning more towards is performance enhancement and rehabilitation. I really love those two classes and I'm more so leaning towards that end as well. Okay, that's good because I'm obviously being an intern and working with us, you got a lot of the hands-on and practical before getting deep into the theory part of it. So now it's good that you're able to match the two together and see how they, yeah. they apply. So mm -hmm. I, I want to give our audience some history, right? So for that can you tell us what program you studied at the, at the College of the Bahamas, now University of the Bahamas? And also you talked about having to like take a few classes to catch up. Um, what, tell, tell us about those classes that you had to take that maybe we can know what the university has to offer in the future to help uh, future students who want to go into AT. Okay. Um, well, my um, bachelor was in biology and I had a mind and I have a minor in chemistry so it's biochemistry that was my undergrad and the classes that I had to take in order to um, be admitted into the Truman State was I had to take anatomy and physiology two levels of that um, statistics I had to take um, anatomy and physiology statistics I also had to take counseling because I, I was trying to duck out on counseling and all those stuff. So I took counseling and two levels of psychology. Some programs, you have to take exercise science, exercise physiology, but I was able to take it here. Um, what else? I guess that's, that's about it. That's all I took. Um, also kinesiology, but I took that while in undergrad, like while I was in my biochem 
before graduating. I had to come back after graduating and take the, pre the prerequisites. But if you so, want to get into the athletic training program, I suggest that you take all those classes as an elective and then transition. That, that was, that's perfect. That was my, going to be my next question in that, had you known your, your passion or your, they ain't got to see me, you know. They ain't got to see me, no, Jess. They know my voice. Y'all know me. I know. We six feet apart. Let's finish the interview. But um, I'm thinking, so look, I think this is good advice for anyone who's listening that if you're in your 300, 400 in biochem, or even in psychology, and you're thinking about going into AT, that it may be best to touch some of these areas that we have at the University of the Bahamas, like psychology, like counseling, because there's a 300 counseling in psychology. And um, the only, the, the two bio classes she mentioned, are there any similar classes here? Do you, you got to take it? Yeah, that's why I took them at and, um, and UB, Anatomy and Physiology. Okay, yeah, so, so you, can, yeah. you can actually prepare yourself to go in for a master's in AT here at the University of Bahamas. Yeah, because I did it. <laughs> so hopefully. And then the only thing that I did take as well, aside from that, was most schools, some of them asked for the GRE. Some of them. For any master's program, I think that you would have to take the GRE, but I took it um, after I took all my prerequisites, but I didn't really need it. Okay. All right, so with uh, the COVID protocol, can you explain what, what is your institution? How did you, how did you guys adapt to that as far as the um, training program and dealing with sports and athletes? Well, um, for the protocol, you know, you have to be six feet apart. So everybody basically have their own tables because I go out like, a little bit smaller than others. So we have our own tables that we sit at. I guess we are party of seven so if it's more you just sit on the side of each table because it's actually six feet apart um we always we have to wear a mask during class times so we can't take it off if we're in public areas we have to have our masks on the only time our mask would be off is if we eat or if we're taking a drink or something like that um in the clinics same thing applies the tables the benches are six feet apart so if it's too much people inside, they'll have to wait outside until somebody's finished with their rehab or getting served, and then they would come in. So it's based, it's similar to what we do in the Bahamas. So nothing, you know, out, out of the ordinary. I mean, COVID out of the ordinary, but <laughs> other than that, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the only thing. Your yeah, typical day kind of looks like between classes, being in the clinic, attending practices. I know you say that it's been cold and snowy here. So yes, freezing. Yeah. Working sports in the cold weather. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, my goodness. I can't. It's be so cold to keep up. Really cold. <laughs> you know how I mean cold weather go? But, um, my schedule would be, we have classes, all my classes basically in the morning. So my release class is 7.30 in the morning. But the program does is we have our classes in the morning and then we have a break, like for lunch or you could take a 30 or one hour nap and then you're in the clinic. You're in the clinic for at least, I'm in the clinic from 1.30 to 6.30 sometimes, depending on like how many people in there, but usually 6.30. I think the latest I left the clinic is 7 o'clock. But so classes would start 7.30. Then by 10 or 11 o'clock, I'll be out of class. And then I take my lunch. And if I have studying or homework to do, I'll try fit that in. And by 1.30, I have my lamp for 1.11. So by 1.30, I'm in the clinic and then... Sometimes we'd have games during that time, but I'm in the clinic from 1.30 to 7 or 6.30, depending. And afterwards, I would have to get my work, my schoolwork done. So between, I'd say 7.30, I'd eat dinner. Um, after dinner, I would start 
doing my homework, if I have to study, um, group work, stuff like that. I'll have to get out the way by at least 10, 11 o'clock so I could sleep and get back up and do it again. <laughs> There's a lot of hours that go into it. Okay, so what, what sports or what setting have you been working with this semester? Which part in? Which sports or what setting have you been working oh. in as far as um, games? Okay, practices? so my sports, the sports that I'm assigned to are um, soccer, men and women's soccer, swimming, and one more. Wait, men and women's soccer, swimming, baseball. Yeah. So basically four. And they vary with games. And their scheduling is different to different times. But sometimes during the clinic, like it's a mixture of them in the clinic. So you would help with getting them ready for practice and stuff like that. But that's the sports that I'm assigned to. I, I'm, I'm curious, so with COVID-19 vaccines being available in the United States, um, tell us a little bit about maybe some of the team dynamics and, and as it pertains to COVID protocol, and also is it a, a, maybe a requirement for the teams over there to be vaccinated? Tell us about the realities over at your institution. Okay, so um, most of the people already got the vaccine here, um, they've been there for a little while, actually. And because we um, are letter trainers, first medical respondents, you kind of have, like, first preference to the vaccine. But the athletes, I don't think they have to. It's not mandatory that they be vaccinated to play or anything. Um, during games, I know, I think every couple weeks or every week, I'm not sure, um, they do testing. So they do the testing themselves here to see um, the, their status and all of that. And then in, I guess, a couple of days, they'll get the results and you know who has it, who doesn't have it, and what to do and what steps to make based on, on that. Okay, so I'm gonna ask another question on top of that. Have you gotten the vaccine? No, I've not gotten it. <laughs> I've not gotten it yet. What you plan to? I have no idea. <laughs> In a way, I was saying that maybe I might, if I come back home, I'm not sure. I'm just, I'm still thinking about what to do, what decisions to make based on the vaccine and stuff like that. And I, I'm not sure if they, I don't know, even know how long, like if you get vaccinated, how long it would stay in your body and when to get vaccinated again. I guess I have a lot more to know about it, but I've not get, gotten it yet. Okay. It just sounds like you're just waiting to get better informed. I, I, I feel that's responsible. The same thing with me. Um, you know, <laughs> um, I don't want to have that kind of conversation here, but it is. This is athletic matters. We got to talk about these type of matters here. You know, so mm -hmm. um, it's good to get it just safe um, with the realities, especially a high account, I, I presume, inside the location that you're at. It's good to know mm -hmm. that you are safe, you are COVID free. Um, you see, we yeah, got have one on Mars. It has nothing to do with yes, yeah. I personally believe she thinks I'm going to stay. But <laughs> we can move on from there, right? Um, and I, I want to go back again, right? I want to go back to your, your student days. And I really want to ask, when was that moment or what was it that made you believe from biochemistry, which normally you either go into psychology one day or doctor, what made you a Bahamian who I would say before this was not exposed to even AT to a lot of training, decide this as a career path. Oh, wow. I was hoping you asked that question. <laughs> um, well, what does, okay. From biochemistry, you know, most of biochem majors, I'd say mo the majority, some of them, um, want to do medicine a lot and that's the feel that I actually was going to do like I, I wanted to do medicine while being a biochemist a biochemistry major and I like I sat down and did some thinking like what do you love because I know if you do something that you love you work never work a day in your life so that's what I wanted to do I wanted to do what I love so I like sports I like science I like treating patients so I actually combined those two together. 
actually it wasn't that leg training that came to mind first it was kinesiology because that's the class i took i took kinesiology in school <laughs> wait wait ren wait <laughs> you you wait so i took kinesiology as a, like an undergrad right and i talked to the lecturer mr mckean and he told me to talk to that athletic director to talk to um Kim Roll, Mrs. Kim Roll. So I flagged her down in the library one day. And I was talking to her and she's like, I'm the wrong person you talking to. Oh, you talking to the library. Research. Huh? Research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what Kim was doing in the library. I just saw her walking in the library. Let me think that date that this happened. There's something of what I can't remember the day. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> But I just remember seeing her in the library. She was she was taking the elevator. She had on a blue suit. You know that nice blue suit she she's wear. I know she's going to go tell me. You remember all this, but you can't remember the day. <laughs> no, I can't remember the day. <laughs> I cannot remember the day. I wish I did. Cause that was like an eye opener to me, <laughs> but I remember she had on she had on a blue suit, some heels, and she was walking towards the elevator. And before she like, I think I made a miss on elevator actually because she was clicking on it and the elevator opened. And I started, I ran up to her because I wanted to actually talk to her about it. And I was telling her what I wanted to do, and she was like, "I'm the wrong person. You, I need you to talk to um Sasha." It was Ferguson at the time, I think. I'm not sure. Sasha Ferguson <laughs> or something like that. And I know it's Sasha Johnson now. <laughs> But she is saying that's who I need to talk to. Huh? What year is this? What year is this? This is 2018. Okay. Yeah, Sasha was already married. <laughs> But I I think she said Ferguson, not sure. But I I read one of those but you can hear me yeah we can hear you we can hear you oh okay so guys i saw it load and okay yeah so um yeah after talking now uh, on chem roll i um after graduating I made an appointment with Sasha in her office and then I was actually explaining to Sasha what I wanted to do but I never said athletic training and then Sasha looked at me and it's like it sounds like you want to do what I want to do I was like no because I wasn't aware of what athletic training was you know being a bio in biochemistry I wasn't really aware of it I being honest I want I I being honest <laughs> So I wasn't sure of what it was. And so she's like it sounds like you want to do what I want to do and I was like in my head I was smiling at her right but I was like I don't think Sasha get what I want to do. It's not a lot of training cuz I thought it was you know you just train athletes and that's it you don't do any treatment none of that. And then Sasha told me um She is no openings yet um but she will email me about when there's an opening to actually intern and 3 days later I got an email from Sasha stating that I can come and intern after like I did some traveling first and then I came back and interned and then the minute the guy actually came into the the clinic here at UB I was like oh this looks nice and then on the first day i fell in love with with that leg training and i didn't feel like i was working i'd wake up in the mornings to come and assist and help i wasn't getting paid or anything and i loved it i just wanted to do it even though i wasn't getting paid you know and that's how i knew that this is what i wanted to do that's that's great so we were in here we were sliding in in the front we were in here debating this now right because mm-hmm. you know she's a former athlete uh because there's evidence on google we know Sasha was a former athlete so we're wondering do you have an athletic past past uh past 
Oh, yeah, nah. the <laughs> Sakita and, and Sasha always is laughing when I say that. <laughs> let, 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 let's, let, let, what, give us the age. When, when are you an athlete? Because I understand where you're coming from. That's what I be telling Kim. Let me come all the way in the frame. I, I used to be telling Kim when I was young. I was like, in the environment. Tell us completely about all of your athletic background. Um, well, I used to run track and field um, from primary school up to high school. <laughs> That's what I did. And then I also played volleyball in from grade 10 to grade 12. And I just liked the other sports as well. But those are the two main things I did. I ran track and I played um, volleyball. And in your experience as a student athlete, have you ever seen professional schools? who, I guess, filled the role of ATS? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I know you <laughs> wanted to do that, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay, speaking of your, you got a chance to work with him. Um, how about yeah. About your and having him in the training room. Pardon? I, can't, I, couldn't, I didn't have a question clearly. I said, since you brought up your name, I said, what was your experience working with him in the training, oh. training room? Oh, you're a me on my toes sometimes, <laughs> making sure that I was there early, helping out. But I loved working with Yorick. It was really nice, a nice experience to work with a former student athlete. Because before Yorick was there, you know, Yorick, uh, Yorick was actually an athlete there. So he used to come in for treatments. You know, and seeing a transition from him. A from lot. Him he used to come in a lot. So, yeah. Name, name, which I think. Yeah, he used to stay in the athletic room. Name the athletes. Yeah, and live in 18. Name those athletes. He used to talk to athletes that live in the training room. So, yeah, working with him was awesome, actually. You know, he always he has a good personality, you know. So, working with him was really good. Very enthusiastic and motivating. So, I like working with you. That's how you're, but that's how your top five. Name your top five student athletes at UB who always oh, I can't in. Do that. <laughs> I, can't want, do I want in the top five, and then the people who take, they get me. That's called you. Julio, Julio, we got Julio. We'll stay today. Oh, yeah. Julio, Julio. Audience, you can get in on this. Julio is one. Yurik is two. Let's name three others. I, I know a few. But just, you know, maybe they come for uh, what it is. Don't do it. Like, I, I listen to the Sasha. We need three more audience. Before I we need move one, on. three more. More. one more. That's one more. It. <laughs> Amber. Amber is a really nice one. Amber used, to, Amber, used to, Amber used to get injured? Or she does she used no, to do like... No, Amber used to get injured, but she used to be in the room. But I ain't gonna do no more. <laughs> Amber, quiet, man. You gotta give us two more. Come on, brother. Two more. Two I more can't. You. you know how much athletes watching this and then I ain't get in trouble for you? Pick on basketball. <laughs> you need basketball. Just one basketball player. Just one. One? It's couple. One <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! Say the names! Say the names! I can't. I, I'm falling into your trap. <laughs> it's over. They ain't behind you. They ain't vaccinated. I, I don't know you to you, Ren. I'm falling into your trap. I'm getting back. Anyway, that's a, good, that's a comedic break. I could be so like this celebrity. Uh, <laughs> can't expose. No, stop that. You, you, you fall for three enough. That's the evidence here. But... We're going to go with two more questions, and then we want to open up the floor to you, the audience. Oh, Piggy is definitely one. Thank you. But we're going to open up the floor to you, the audience, to ask for a few questions. We're going to ask one more question, maybe? One more. One, so we're going to give you one more question, then we're going to open the floor. Okay. My last question would be, I guess since knowing that you're in a cold, kind of cold weather um, climate and sports that you've been working is there a particular sport or setting that you you would you would like to work that you're not able to do right now? Yeah, um, I'm not assigned to the actual sport I that I really want to work with. That's basketball. So I think I will be assigned 
um, the next semester, not next semester, the following. After that, I'd probably be signed to basketball. But yeah, the cold weather, I'm mostly with soccer outside and it's freezing and I don't like to go like that. I mean, I love the players. I love work. They're nice, work, nice um, athletes, but the weather is horrible. I wouldn't say it's horrible. It's cold and working outside. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> what you so say? Do you, you prefer, prefer the, you prefer the heat or the cold? Um, that's I don't prefer. I rather be comfortable. Like I don't like to be too hot and I don't like to be too cold. Like I like to be comfortable where I can just wear regular clothes. I don't have to be tight or anything. You know, I just like to be comfortable. So that's the only thing. But, like, some days yeah. at soccer, it's nice weather, and I like to be outside, you know. But when it's cold, I barely can wrap a foot. <laughs> so my hands would be shivering. So. Last question, I promise. Um, what are your plans after graduation? Do you plan to stay in the U.S.? Or are you willing to come back home and continue with that training at home? Because we really do need um, more athletic trainers in the Bahamas. Yeah, I'm going wherever the opportunity is, actually, you know. Like, if I come home, it's if there's an opportunity for me. Wherever, I'd say whatever, wherever God leads me, that's where I'll be. So that's that's my thought process right now. I'm not thinking too deep into it because I don't want to, like, stress out myself, like, thinking about it now. But I'd say wherever... The opportunity comes and wherever God leads me, that's where I'll be. Because that's where I know the door would open and I would be accepted there. You understand? Yeah, man. Seek ye first kingdom. Amen. Yes, so, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we want to do up the time. So we can do a time check and it'll be disconnected after an hour. 412. 412? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think, I, I believe comfortably we have an additional maybe 10 to 15 minutes. I'll let you do the uh, really? You could let me do something? She's letting me no, do something. Giving it Girl, a time. Move! Move! I'm giving it a time check. Rain time. Rain time. Oh, oh. All right, question. <laughs> First of all, I want to just start out the head and that it came at the University of the Bahamas. You were coming to me. I, I don't need to be caught up in there. But Sasha's in the comments. She's having fun. Uh, she loved the heritage. She's saying adapt and conquer. A lot of good comments from the athletic trainer. We don't know if it's really her or maybe her child loves and just person answer to we don't know what's going on. We have no proof, you know. I wish that we could disconnect and really see the Sasha there, catch a washing dishes. But <laughs> shout out to Sasha. Welcome, welcome. Let's get uh maybe two or three questions, ladies and gentlemen, before we end today. Um it's my pleasure to be here and co host alongside Ms. M she did a great job. I think we're natural and of course next next week it's gonna be a team of Sasha and yourself without me. So I love it. No, I ain't gonna be up. I ain't gonna be up. I put normally. I put them. Uh -huh. But also, don't forget to get your bands from your athletic trainer. Of course, we ran our bands. Says I love my. I may wear it upside down. I want to show them. Yeah, but I. It was reading right to me. It wasn't reading right to them. So I want them to see it. Y'all, these bands so sexy. Look at that. Look at that. Bam. Let's just say I love Sasha. No. One size fits all. You That's what they're saying. That's it. Boom. One size fits all. I don't know what she's trying to do. Gonna be fat. I don't know what she's trying to do. But anyway, um, <laughs> but it says I love my athletic trainer. You can contact Sasha. Of course, you can contact Miss Enfield. Get your bonds. Wear your bonds. We got a special competition coming up next week for those who have their bonds. Um, we have a comment by Sasha again. I'm so proud of you for that. Continue to do well. That is not the Sasha we know, Paula. She's being nice. It's a trap. <laughs> Obviously, she's trying to come back. Don't fall for it. Don't do it. Um, we have our first question. What setting would you prefer once you... Oh, oh we have two questions. They're coming in quick. So let me catch that first question. Uh, what setting would you prefer once you become an athletic trainer? And I believe she's meaning a certified athletic trainer. What setting would you prefer? University or professional? Um, I actually was um, three sectors, actually. So I do want to do university, professional, as well as clinical. 
So it's like three okay. areas. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Sasha, you see what she's teaching you? They update the book. <laughs> they ain't still worrying no more, huh? Crap. Crap. Good. Um, what would you consider doing or a good idea to push the importance of athletic training and trainers in the Bahamas? Oh, um, well, what Sasha and Shakitha, those are doing now, like more of awareness of what it is, getting into the schools, the high schools as well letting them know the meaning of athletic training. Because most people, once you say athletic training, they think that you just um, training people in the gym and that's it. They don't know the, how big or how vast the athletic training career can be. We do industrial, clinical, professional, so much work with insurance and all those stuff. And a lot of people don't know that, how big and vast the athletic training career could be. So it's basically going into the schools and telling them, this is what you can do. Um, this is what an athletic trainer is. So, yeah. So you're trying to say in, in a quick paraphrase that athletic training is where the money resides? Is that what you're saying? Is that, <laughs> say what? <laughs> is that it? Yeah. Where the money All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, next question. What advice would you give to any um, – let me – I want to say it correctly. I don't want to paraphrase it. Um, hey, Paulette, what advice would you give to a current UB student who wants to enter into the athletic training profession? Okay. My advice is start getting your prerequisites ready. Um, start looking at schools that you want to go into because some of them require different things, but try to get the basics of all what you can get at the University of the Bahamas. Um, some schools ask for the GRE. So once you know what school you want to go to, you would know, okay, now I have to prepare for the GRE this time. Instead of like looking after you graduate, which I, that's what I did because I didn't really know what I wanted to go into. But, you know, just start early. Start looking at what the schools, start getting your prerequisites together. By the time you graduate, you can just transition right into the athletic training program as a master's. Hey, Ren, what's up with the camera? Guys, something happened to the camera? Can you see me? Can you see me, Paula? I can see you. Oh, somebody mentioned what's up with the camera. I don't, I thought something happened. We're still there. We're still there, everybody. Um, so we're still taking questions. Keep them coming. We had them coming in pretty fast. We have about, uh, I think, comfortably like seven minutes maybe before the, the live cut. So we want to take maybe one or two more questions. While we wait for questions, for more questions, is there anything you want to share, Paulette? Um, any cool experiences that you might have had so far? I haven't had any. Well, I saw a lot of injuries, but you know, a lot of trainers like to talk about like the injury that stood out. I haven't had that yet. <laughs> so when it happens, I'll call you and Sasha right away to let y'all know. She was in the MBJ. It was in the video recently. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you go back on the timeline, there's a video um, where we talk about injuries and athletic training, and that was live footage of a very famous <laughs> UB athlete. I'm not making fun of him, but I am making fun of him. But he um, was famous, sadly, actually sadly, for the hamstring injury. He, he, he always got it. And we had a good session, actually, on that, talking about frequencies of injuries and what you can do in training. So we have a lot of good content on this page and on the YouTube page. Go back, watch it. It's a lot of good conversation. Um, we're still waiting on one more question. I want to pick up next week. So next week is a gentleman. I haven't had a chance to meet him, but um, his name is the Deron. Deron. So Deron is another, and I think this is a good, a good variety. So we interviewed a past intern who now is a massage, going into massage therapy. We're interviewing, of course, Paulette, who's pursuing a master's degree, which would, of course, bring in closer to the certified athletic trainer and, and becoming similar on the status of who brings the trainer, of course. And now we're, we're going into the discussion with somebody doing it at the bachelor's level. And I think that invites a good question, if I may, Paulette. Um, do you find that those who pursue athletic training at the bachelor's level have a, a smoother transition into the master's as preferred to? yourself who did biochemistry and, and came into it? 
Well, I haven't um, been in my cohort. I haven't met them, any who did a bachelor's first and then went into master's. Most of them are exercise science majors. I think actually all of them in my cohort are exercise science except for me. I'm the only biochemist chemistry major in there. But um, some who did like bachelor's in athletic training, they probably do a master's in exercise physiology or exercise science. So they... So it's weird that you find somebody who does all that. Yeah, I can say yeah. that. For me, I went to bachelor's from um, bachelor's drug training, and then I got my master's in healthcare administration. So to have more of the administrative side of understanding the whole healthcare system. Good. That's good stuff. Yeah. Um, were you able to become... Are you able to become board certified with a bachelor's as well? That's a question. I think. Oh, I mean, you are. Oh, she, you no, are, what's yeah. the question? She Sorry, but she was saying you are. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I just want to go over that again. So what we're hearing from a thought professional, including now, but like I said, with confidence, that uh, you can become board certified at either the bachelor's or master's level, mm -hmm. and I think that's great. Well, I had a yeah. track you for a lot of experience in the University of Bahamas first. You found a love for it and a passion. And um, you kind of shared an, your story with us. The good, the bad. So you're sharing your current, you know, studies that you don't like, studies you do like, and of course, dealing with climate change. As we come to a close, because of time, I really want to know um, what what three words of advice or three nuggets that you leave our listening audience? Maybe somebody's listening from high school, maybe they're listening on YouTube one day. What three words of advice would you want to leave to them um, if they're thinking about coming into the healthcare, healthcare profession? I would say do your research. Um, actually look into it. Um, see what you want, if this is what you actually want to do. And if you have the opportunity, like I had the opportunity, intern in that field for... Um, a month or so, so you can actually know that this is what I actually want to do instead of just seeing it from a bird's eye view and then not going into it. And then when you actually do all the schooling, all of that, and you don't love the profession that you're in. So I'd say do your research, try your hardest to actually intern in that field or volunteer, do whatever you have to do. And, you know, then you would know that this is what I want to pursue. At, even at a high school level as well. Excellent. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. This is going to be here on IG Live, of course, on this page, University is Athletic Training page. On Saturday, I would say, you know, let's say Monday, we're going to upload a reproduction of this, a clean version for YouTube and, of course, the Mingo stage. And of course, we're taking the audio to put on our podcast Monday. So you are here on Athletic Matters with, of course, your co host, Ren, your host, the Athletic. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. You don't know my name? I'm not messing with you no more. I'm stupid. 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 I'm stup